Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're gonna to talk about Blender's secret power, data blocks, now you can reuse anything to make anything. Let's get going. Okay, so let's say you're in this scenario. You're making a short film in a team and it's time to start animating and start shooting, but all the things you need aren't ready yet. What do you do? Do you just wait on all those things to be ready? So the characters and the location and the props, or do you start animating and get your ideas worked out and then redo all that work later once all the stuff's available? Well, in Blender, you have the option of actually starting and then reusing what you make uh, in your animation. So let's do that. We're gonna create a little short film with some rough objects, and then we're going to talk about how we could reuse that um, animation data on the actual official object. So hopefully this is a really helpful exercise for you guys. So I've got this nice little setup and uh, this is gonna be a little funny little skit where this robot is gonna be going down this sci-fi hallway and it's gonna come to the door and it's gonna try and go through the door but the door sensor doesn't see him because he's too small. And so he's just gonna run into the door, bang his head, his face. And he's gonna back up, try again, bam, 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 bam. Doesn't work. Then someone's gonna walk by, like human, so feet and legs and stuff, and the door will open for them. The little robot tries to go in after him and doesn't time it right, and the door closes and catches him uh, in the lurch and he's stuck there and that's how it will end. So funny little short film. So I don't have any official assets yet. Nobody's made anything for me. So I've just got this and what do I do? Well, what we can do is we can say, all right, um, let's assume that my modeling team has access to some basic information, right? So they have access to maybe the scale of the world that I'm working in and the things that I have. In fact, let's say I send them this file. So let's save this file and we'll send it to our modeling team. And we'll say, these are the specs that we're working with. This is the basic setup of the size of everything. And this is what you need to use to create the detailed models. And they go, great. And they all start to work on modeling the doors and the walls and this little character. But now I'm just sitting around waiting, right? Until they finish all that. And that could take days. And then the deadline might be shortly after they get all that stuff done. And I'm stuck because I don't have enough time to animate all this. So what do I do? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate this with this rough geo first. And then I'm going to use Blender's awesome power of data blocks to reapply all that animation that I do onto the official assets when they come through. So let's start off here. Now, first thing is, I want to say this cube, um, I'm going to put the origin of this cube where the modeler is going to have the origin. And let's say we decide with the, um, the modeler that the origin is going to live right in the bottom of the cube itself. So if I select the bottom face, shift S, cursor to select it, and then I come up here to object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. That will put the origin right down there at the bottom of this cube. Okay, so now this cube will always, you know, line up with that dot. When he creates, when or he or she creates the model for this little robot, the base of the robot will be the same. So the origin will line up and that's important for this to work, okay? Because the animation data we're gonna be putting onto this is going to be basically on that origin point is where it lives. And so as long as that origin stays the same relative to everything else, all the rest of this stuff will work. Click on my robot and I've got him named robot. Um, and I wanna start my animation and I'm just gonna zoom in on my dope sheet and the dope sheet has got several different views. If you click this little drop down, if you're not familiar, the dope sheet is basically just a top level view of all the keys in your scene. So it can show you all the keyframes of everything. And it's really helpful be getting a sense of where everything is. It's great for timing animation. Whereas like the graph editor, you know, we've got the slopes and stuff of all the motion. That's really good for adjusting the motion and adjusting, you know, where things go and how that speed ramp feels between keys. But here is the dope sheet's really where you do like the broad stroke timing. So I'm gonna switch from the dope sheet over to the action editor. You get this little drop down in the dope sheet. And you have all these different dope sheet modes and the action editor is the one we're gonna look at. And this allows us to create a new dope a new um, action for our object. Now, whenever you take an object and you start to animate it, so let's start animating this guy. Let's come over to his object transforms and let's create some keys. I'll just click all those buttons. They go yellow and now he's got a key. You see a key frame shows up here in our action editor. I can open it up to see what the keys are, X, Y, Z, location and rotation, which is what we've done here. And you can see if I added scale, that would pop up as well. I don't need scale, we'll leave that off. But So I've got all my keys living here. But the other thing that happened, I don't know if you noticed, this changed. See how it says robot action now? Um, and that's the name of this piece of mesh, robot. And then it's added the word action at the end of it. I click this little drop down. This will show me all the different animation data blocks that live in my scene. We'll get to what that means in a minute. But right now, all you need to know is that when I started animating, it created this. 
action, data block. Now I could remove this data block from this little robot. I could click new to create a new one. I could call it anything I want, robot action two, for example. And if I click this drop down, you can see we've got both. And notice that when I switch them, I get the keyframes back from that original action. If I switch to this one, I've got no keyframes because I haven't put any animation data into this action. So think about this like a material. You know, you can change the materials in the material slot. You can assign different materials to objects. It's the same thing with animation. Animation is a data block, just like a material is a data block. They're these things that live in your scene that you can assign to anything, okay? So let's get to work on creating some animation and then we will use this data block when we get the official asset. So I have to say, if you want to see how I make all of this stuff that goes into this short film, you can find it if you join Patreon or YouTube. On YouTube, if you join at the All Access Pass level and higher, or on Patreon, if you join at any of the tiers, you'll get access to the uncut version of this tutorial, which will include everything that goes into making this little short, okay? The YouTube video is gonna have the highlights, the top level bits. They're just really talking about the topic, which is the data block topic. So this is for people to search and find the answer that they need around the topic that they're looking for on YouTube. But if you wanna get all this extra content, you need to head over to YouTube, join there, or head over to Patreon. Now, if you want this project file, you can actually get this project file when I'm done with all the stuff that's going to live on Patreon at the second tier and up. And that's where you can get all the project files I do every month. And what happens is I make project files on every tutorial, I make a new project file, those go into a folder that you get access to every single month and you can download all of the project files from that month, but they expire. So you have to get them on the month that you sign up, otherwise they go away. So if you see a project file you're keen on, jump over and join for that month, you'll get that project file and stay joined. You can keep getting project files from there on out. So it's really worth it if you're interested. Thanks for checking it out and thanks to everyone that supports this channel already by supporting on YouTube and over on Patreon. Okay, so I'm gonna start animating and um, I'll see you back when I'm done. Okay, so I've created this little animation of this cube that's gonna be our robot. He runs into the door, pulls back, tries again, bam, doesn't work, gets angry, boom, boom, boom. And then somebody walks up, opens the door and tries to go and gets caught. Funny ending. Okay, so that's the little short film, great. Now. Let's say I find out, whoa, hey, the assets are ready. Let's bring them in. And now what? We've done all this animation work. We put all this stuff onto these little primitives. How does that help us move forward? Well, let me show you how to apply these animations to our new models really easily. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the different assets that have been created for my, my scenes. So um, I'm gonna come over here. First, I'll bring in the robot. So I'll create a new collection. I'll call this maybe official. Let's see what we've got. So I'm gonna go up here and go file and append, and I'm going to find the file. So there we go, assets. I'm gonna go into the object folder and here's all the assets that I've been provided. So I'm gonna grab the robot mm -hmm. asset and I'm gonna append him into my scene. And here he is, and he's at the origin, he's at zero, zero, zero. So what I wanna do is get the animation that I had for this guy and put it on. So if I come back over to my dope sheet, you can see I've got the little drop down that we talked about. We've got the action editor, which the robot action lives on. Now. What I can do is I can just take this robot action and we can hide this original robot right here. I'll just turn it off for now from rendering. And we can grab the new robot and we can click the action drop down and look for all the actions we have. And there it is, robot action. If we assign robot action to him, suddenly he's gonna be using all that nice animation that we made before. Now we can see the full short with the actual robot asset. Great. So you can see, we could save a ton of time. Now what we can also do is come in here and uh, bring in everything else. So I don't have any animation on this specific wall. So I think I could just bring in my set as is. So I might take my camera and move it out of the scene collection. And I'm gonna get rid of this light because it's not actually doing anything. And I'll call this my temp set. And I might move the doors over to, um, let's see, animated props. We go animated props door left and right drag them in there they are and now i can come here and turn off my temporary set and i can bring in my new set so file append i'm going to grab my wall and my floor and pin those into the scene and i'll put them into a new collection called official set or final set 
pop that there. And then I need my animated props. So I've got my doors. So I'm going to bring in file append door left, door right. Let's append those in and let's assign the action to that. So door left has an action on it called door left action. So let's grab that door left action. Door right has the door right action action. So let's assign that data block to door right action. And then we can take these guys and just drag them into our temporary set that will hide them. And now we've got everything we need. Now we can turn off scene world and we come up here and turn on ambient occlusion, bloom and screen space reflections. <laughs> Great, now we can just do our final lighting pass. So you can see that all those animation blocks we're not wasted. We can use all of this. And now we want to tweak them a little bit based on seeing the robot and seeing how it feels in the shot. But overall, everything we need is there. And it's really, really useful. So this is a great way to work using animation data blocks. If you update your characters, if this robot had a big change, I could easily delete him from my scene. And the data blocks is still going to be around. I can just assign it to the new asset and it's going to continue to use the animation that I've put my time and energy into. In this way, you can move your scene forward without waiting for everybody else. And it's one of Blender's best secret powers. I love it. I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you did hit that like button, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well and check out the Patreon. Check out joining on YouTube, get the full uncut version of this and learn how to make this whole short film from scratch. Uh, I hope you really do check that out. Thanks so much for watching and thanks to all of you who already support this channel. Even just by watching, it's a great help. Thank you. I will catch you in the next one. Until then, have a great week. See ya.